If, like me, you travel for food, you need to add Copenhagen to the top of your European bucket list. The city is brimming with flavorful street food, some of the best pastries in the world, and thoughtful dining experiences that are sure to leave an impression on you. My husband Ryan and I recently jaunted off to Copenhagen for a long weekend from London, and let me tell you, it did not disappoint. While it was a fairly relaxing weekend, here's what we got up to, some cool neighborhoods to explore, and of course, the details of everything we devoured on our trip. I am definitely going to get a comment from someone saying all you did was eat in this video and look that's fine basically it is all I did but enough of the intro let's get into 72 hours in Copenhagen. Of course it is never a weekend trip from London unless you are up at the crack of dawn running to get work to try and catch a flight but the sunrise view on the train just never gets old. With that out the way we landed in a brilliantly sunny Copenhagen, dropped our bags at the hotel and headed right out to explore. Time is but a concept on travel day, so coffee and pastries at Heart Bakery were our very first stop. This cardamom croissant was one of the best things I have ever eaten. Perfectly flaky and buttery in the center with a crisp caramelized outside, it was basically just one giant cardamom flavored Queen Amman. We then headed out to explore this area and stumbled upon so many cute stores. Definitely don't come to Copenhagen unless you want to do a bit of shopping. I really did overspend my budget for clothes on this trip. Pastries was just the start and Gasoline Grill was on my list of places to eat, so an afternoon burger was definitely the next stop. These are really good American style burgers, but if you are someone who has access to trying American burgers all the time, I probably wouldn't go out of your way for them. Less eating and more walking, we set off on a Hidden Gems walking tour with Politically Incorrect Tours. This was part tour, part comedy, and it is definitely one of the more unique walking tours I have done. It covered Copenhagen's history and a little bit of the political climate and plenty of places we wouldn't have found otherwise. Some of my favourite tidbits from this tour were seeing these amazing underwater statues in the main canal, as well as these beautiful gardens. We strolled around the neighbourhood as the sun began to set and I forced Ryan to have a quick appetizer of this renowned Copenhagen hot dog before we headed to our dinner reservation. The final stop of the day was Amman 1921, a Michelin recommended restaurant with the most beautiful interior. They are known for a fancier version of the traditional open sandwich in Copenhagen, which I will put the name on the screen because I am not trying to pronounce that. They had a good variety of multi-course menus to choose from, from the two course that we had to the full experience with wine pairings. Prices started from 370 Danish krone for our two course menu. The full menu was seasonal and really tasty and we capped the evening off with some of their classic cocktails infused with house-made schnapps. I am still thinking about this Negroni. This really was the perfect first day in Copenhagen. One thing you should know about me is that I will walk 500 miles just to try an amazing bakery and that's exactly what our second day in Copenhagen was all about. It did start out with a little bit of a disaster because we trekked 45 minutes uptown to try Juno the bakery which sadly ended up being closed for the summer. I drowned my sorrows in coffee from Prologue around the corner enjoying the most incredible cardamom bun. It was so good that I had to google who made it and it turns out that it is actually from Juno the bakery because they supply the coffee shop so this was a very lucky coincidence. We then walked across town and through some of the neighbourhoods to specifically explore these two areas that are known for their independent shops and just really chill, relaxed vibes. The sun was out so a quick coffee soft serve from Coffee Collective was very much needed. I could easily devour an entire vat of this. We then continued wandering the streets and stumbled upon this beautiful park before finding ourselves in this really, really, really good craft brew pub called Bruce. Plenty of beers to choose from and a great outdoor setting. I got a sour, which is probably about the closest I will come to drinking beer. Across the bridge and back into the centre of town we found this food market perfectly timed for lunch. Again we opted for the open sandwich that shall not be named and then just walked around exploring all the other food choices. When I realised we had done basically almost no touristy things that day we had a quick afternoon siesta before popping over to Newhound to check out all the colourful houses. This was busy in the evening but it was a really beautiful area. Our dinner booking was for 9pm that night which is basically my bedtime so we started off with cocktails at Ruby, a hidden cocktail bar overlooking the canal. They had some really thoughtful and inventive drinks and it is a great spot for people watching and seeing the sun go down. I had this frozen amaretto sour which was as exceptional and refreshing as it sounds.
Finally, as if we hadn't eaten enough, the last dinner stop of the trip was calling and it was at the highly recommended host. This is a very popular spot, as you can tell by the 9pm booking, so definitely make a reservation in advance if you want to come here on your trip. You can choose between three or five courses with optional wine pairings and again we went for the three course which started at 395 Danish Kron. It offered a good mix of dishes between scallops to fish and beef plates and of course a lovely dessert. They have a Nordic style tasting menu but of course it is peppered with lots of little snacks and surprises throughout which always makes this type of meal super interesting and fun. It is our last couple of hours in Copenhagen and it is a sunny Sunday which in my opinion is one of the best types of days to get up early and wander around the city while it is still quiet and most people are sleeping in. Our first stop was coffee in a pastry at Anderson and Mallard and they did have this viral square croissant but to be honest I'm a bit of a purist so I would rather stick with the classics. The bakery is nice and close to Newham which is where we went last night but it was also good to stroll over early and see the colourful houses before the crowds arrived. We then thought it was a bright idea to walk all the way to this area which was about an hour's walk in the sun so I would opt for the bus or a taxi if you can but at least on this walk we got to wander past and wave at Noma and admire all of their greenhouses. We took a break from the heat in the Copenhagen Contemporary which is home to a bunch of larger scale and immersive art. It had some cool spaces and exhibits, I really like the projection spaces, they are always so calming but also does anybody else ever feel like they're going to fall asleep in these types of exhibits or is it just me? It's good to know that this gallery is quite small though so stop in if you're in the area but I wouldn't go out of your way for it. Leal Bakery was just around the corner so I made a beeline for the last bakery stop of our trip. This always happens on the last day, I think I just get some sort of pastry panic before we leave a destination. Leal had the most relaxed and easygoing atmosphere and the flaky goods to match and this focaccia was just wonderful. As if we hadn't eaten enough we were off for more food. This is Refn Food Market close by and it is one of the best I have ever been to. I really wish we had more time to try more things here, there were so many different types of cuisines and everything looked absolutely delicious. I went for some tacos at this Mexican place because just look at the way they are cooking this meat and then I finished it off with a gigantic sprinkle covered soft serve and look, no regrets here. Especially as we made our way back to the airport to wait on a delayed plane home. So in my view the moral of the story is always eat yourself silly before going to the airport in case your flight is delayed. And with that 72 hours in Copenhagen is up. Thank you so much for watching this little travel vlog and if you are looking for more Europe inspo check out my Lisbon vlog otherwise I will see you in the next one. <laughs>